The Maximals from the fan-favorite Transformers Beast War series finally make their live-action debut in Transformers Rise of the Beasts as they fight with Optimus Prime and his Autobots against the emerging threat of Scourge and Unicron. But will this be enough for the struggling Transformers franchise? Or is this another missed opportunity? What's up guys? Welcome back to the Montyverse. Today we're going to be diving deep into the Transformers universe. More specifically, the latest installment, Transformers Rise of the Beast. We'll be examining the good, the bad, and everything in between in this spoiler-free review. So, buckle up and let's transform and roll out. As a 90s kid, Beast Wars was my introduction to Transformers. So when I heard that the Maximals were finally making their live action debut, I was beyond thrilled. So I did have pretty high expectations for this film. But as for the film itself, overall, it is a fun summer blockbuster that doesn't really add anything new. It's packed with jaw-dropping action sequences and heartwarming character moments and a lot of 90s nostalgia. The storyline, while enjoyable, isn't anything groundbreaking. Essentially, we've got another familiar MacGuffin chase plot. The Autobots and now the Maximals must thwart the villainous Scourge and Unicron and stop them from acquiring it. While we've seen deviations from this template, such as in Bumblebee, for example, this film largely sticks to it. It's something I wish these films would move away from. That type of storytelling has been done so many times in this franchise and it's become so redundant. It's essentially just a way to feature the Transformers while allowing them to avoid giving the characters compelling stories to guide the film. Out of the Transformers, Optimus Prime, Mirage, and Optimus Primal all have arcs, albeit all pretty basic ones. The human character Noah, played by Anthony Ramos, is pretty great. While I feel like there was a lot of unnecessary scenes with the human characters in this film, I really enjoyed Noah's story, and his chemistry with Mirage, who's voiced by Pete Davidson, adds a lot of heart to the film. However, where the film falls short is the underutilization of the Maximals. Despite being central to the plot, their roles felt more like plot devices than fleshed out characters. This was particularly disappointing considering they are some of the most well-developed characters in the Transformers universe. They were essentially just side characters outside of Primal and none of them have anything to do in this movie other than just being there. On a brighter note, Peter Dinklage as Scourge is truly a standout. His intimidating presence and stellar voice acting establish Scourge as a formidable threat. Every scene that he's in, he feels scary, and it's very believable that he could take out anyone. Similarly, the film does a commendable job of using its mid-90s setting to its advantage, sprinkling in nostalgic pop culture references that 90s kids like me will surely appreciate. The film also does a really good job of incorporating 90s songs into the plot, without it feeling forced. There's a flow and a natural progression of the music into the scene, and I think the songs they picked with the scenes work really well. Digging into the cons of the film, I would say the plot could have been a lot tighter and more focused on the Transformers themselves. While most of the voice acting is top-notch, there were a few performances that felt off and completely took me out of the film for moments. The pacing also struggled, with the movie sometimes rushing through key moments and dragging at other points. But there are a lot of pros with this film, especially Pete Davidson and Anthony Ramos. Like I said, they have great chemistry. I love the characters of Noah and Noah's brother, Chris, played by Dean Scott Vasquez. Their relationship adds a lot of emotional weight and emotional stakes to the film, and I think they both are tremendous in their performances. The fight scenes are some of the most engaging and clear-cut we've seen in a Transformers movie, and I really appreciate Stephen Cable Jr., the director, for finally giving us some really good Transformers fight scenes, as well as some awesome action set pieces. So my final verdict for Transformers Rise of the Beast is going to be three maximal symbols out of five. It's an enjoyable summer blockbuster and a top-tier Transformers film. So guys, that's my review. What are your thoughts? Let's discuss it in the comments down below, and if you like this video make sure to give it a huge thumbs up if you're new to the channel subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest content and until next time guys stay versed